Welcome to the Nordic Mythology Podcast. I'm Daniel Farron, co-owner of the company Horns of Odin, and I'm joined, as always, by Dr. Matthias Nordvig. Hello, everybody. This time, we are joined by a man who needs very little introduction, Aina Selvig from Wadruna. Welcome, Aina. Thank you so much. Good to, uh, good to be back again. Yes, it's wonderful to have you back. Yeah, thank you for for this, your second appearance, uh, I think you were last on in November, just yeah. as just as Assassin's Creed was coming out, which we we spoke about in that episode. Yes, I remember. And uh, I, I I think a lot's happened since then on Wardruna side of things. I know I, I remember you saying that Assassin's Creed was more of a you project, um, whereas now, kind of like the band stuff has been seems like it's been going really well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it was right in the in the sort of promo period. So mm -hmm. I was doing um, shitloads of interviews all the time, uh, spending my time on Zoom uh, a yeah. lot, uh, of course. But um, yeah, no, of course it's um, it it was felt really good to to get it out, uh, finally be able to release it. It was supposed to be released in. Um, in in June um, last year, so okay. uh, but had to be postponed due to COVID. Couldn't mm -hmm. produce. Uh, yeah, production plants were were shutting down and so on. So uh, we pushed it half a year, and uh, yeah, felt felt really good to uh, to do it, and also a little bit. Yeah, it's a strange time to to release an album in mm -hmm. um, in. Uh, yeah, no, not being able to support it with live concerts and uh, and so on. So, um, was of course a little bit. Um, yeah, it was very interesting to to see, and I was very curious to see how it how it all would would go and um, that part of it. And uh, thankfully, it, it appeared to to resonate a lot with with people. And and I guess it's um. um it's a kind of an album that turned quite prophetic in in, um, in at least um, the thoughts behind it and and I don't know the needs that it was born out of uh, this mm -hmm. this uh, um, yeah connectiveness to our surroundings and so on and uh, I think a lot of people appreciated it um, in this period. That it, it it connected the the subject of the album connected very well with people. I think it came at came at a good time when people needed a little pick me up. I think as well, and everyone was a a little bit sad of being at home. And it's always nice to get something new from your favorite band. Um, and and like you said, it helps connect people. More people, I think, were getting out into nature because they had that extra time off work and the extra free time to to get out and. And hopefully get that whole connectiveness together yeah it's a it's a you know it's um nothing beats listening to to the birds and winds in wind in the trees and so on but uh being outside is definitely a good place to to enjoy um Vardruna's music mm -hmm. absolutely i mean you 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 use that in the music itself don't you, you use i, I yeah. do and it's a lot well a lot, a lot of my ideas come up, come from being in nature, especially walking. Walking, that's kind of my my muse, um, and and uh, that's when I hear the music and or mm -hmm. see it or whatever. And then it's back in the studio and chase it down. Um, yeah. Well, that's that's wonderful. Uh, I, I, not enough people get out into nature now. I think I think that's something that we we're losing and. I guess one silver lining from the whole COVID situation is that people did get that that freedom from work, which is so unusual to be in a situation where you can't actually go to work. So you can you've got the time to go out and uh, into nature if you want to. But it just seems we're getting more disconnected than ever yeah. with it. Yeah, and I I can even feel it myself that sometimes when. What what people don't realize, what what I myself doesn't don't realize in, uh, at, at times, especially when when it's a lot of stress and chaos, 
and work uh, is that you think that you don't have time mm -hmm. to to take that walk uh, or or yeah what whatever uh, but the fact is it, it makes you so much more efficient doing mm -hmm. it because you process things so um, and also yeah it clears your mind it it, it, um, it gives you energy in your body uh, mm -hmm. so fact is the, the the work the workflow um, uh, becomes more efficient as well mm -hmm. yeah so um, so moving past that that whole um, not feeling you have time uh, or, or not uh, prioritizing doing it it's, it's actually a, a little bit backwards yeah no I agree completely like walking you know hiking being out in nature that's when my my mind is like mostly active I come up with my best ideas I like manage to like phrase things in the most awesome way and then I go back home and write things down and uh, yeah, yeah you know this is something that has been if you if you go uh, through through um history um also the, this um it's something like the 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 greek philosophers they were doing it um using that as an active method um mm. and and philosophers throughout the time ha, ha, has done that as a, as means and a lot of authors and yeah uh, great artists um have done I think, it i think it was um um in, what's his name um why am I blanking on his name? He's like one of the biggest ones. Kant, of course. Yes. Ima Immanuel Kant, um, who he lived I in. I mean, what did you just call Ayn? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, he's just, he's just, trying, he's spent his German. time to come join us and uh, <laughs> using words like that. Emmanuel who? <laughs> he's German, it's spelled K-A-N-T, okay? Uh, yeah. <laughs> So he he was uh, he lived in Königsberg, which is now Kaliningrad in uh, in Russia, and um, back then it was Germany. And um, uh, I think there was it, it, they used to say that they could set their clocks to him because he would be like walking through town at, at a specific time every day. Mm -hmm. um, sounds a little you know I don't know if I want to be personally want to be that predictable, but uh, I mean I get to get the sense of like <laughs> yeah. But, but there is also um, structure and routine. There is also, mm. I don't know, a ba balance between chaos and logos, I, oh, I guess is good. So sometimes the predictable can be. That's, that's just reminding me when I was a when I was a child, we used to have I, I lived on quite a steep hill, maybe like a 15, 20 percent gradient hill. And there used to be, well, you know, when I was maybe 10 to up until when I maybe up to like 17 18 there used to be a gentleman that used to run up this hill pretty much every day and he was he was an elderly gentleman maybe in his late 60s 70s and obviously as i grew he got older um and he i remember as a child he would he would jog at a fair pace but as he got older he, he'd slow down but even to the point of until one day i, I stopped he stopped doing it so i assume maybe he couldn't anymore or, or worse but even up until the last day i saw him he would be out there and even though he couldn't run it anymore it was a it was a, a walk and then a slow walk but it was still there regimented every day like clockwork he would be there and we just which kind of he was just the guy we all remember seeing him and we'd be like oh there he is you know yeah. hello and it was uh that's probably a similar sort of thing just kind of going through the motions and, and that thinking time yeah it's medicine Mm -hmm. absolutely i think my my thinking time definitely comes when i'm when i'm carving um mm. when i'm carving the horns especially when it's when it's a design that i've done a hundred times something like the the helm of or the veg vcr that i can kind of just do with my eyes closed now my mind even though my body's doing the motions and i'm getting, paying attention my mind just wanders and, yeah. and like says, that's when i come up with completely any best ideas for whether it's the business or what i or that I need to put myself on a diet. <laughs> Some, <laughs> those those ideas always come up uh, when I'm in that kind of. I guess it's like a flow state almost. Just yeah, it's going meditation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, being out in nature definitely definitely gives you that. And it's something I'm I'm guilty of not doing enough. When I get to go out with the dogs with Sarah and we just go for a, a walk, it's just a nice thing to do. It makes me I re I enjoy it, but then. 
the next day I'll get caught up in some bullshit of being, like you said, quote unquote, too busy to do it. Mm -hmm. And you soon forget how much you actually really enjoyed it. Okay, I have to kick something in here um, because I actually right now can't go outside. (laughs) I have a newly discovered allergy. Not sure what it is, but I think (laughs) think it's ragweed, um, which is uh, like actually really... um, like it's it's a it's a strong allergen. A lot of people have allergies against it. And and uh, here in Colorado, we had a really wet spring up until like a week and a half ago. Now we have a heat wave. It's like a hundred degrees, and and then there's this ragweed that's like all over the place. And the other day, I went outside and for a hike. And about like five steps into the hike, I experienced the most painful thing I've ever had happened to my face and I've taken a bottle to my face once um so that was really like my it's just like melted (laughs) (laughs) I couldn't see out of my eyes or anything like that it was like it was horrible (laughs) so it's almost like pepper spray oh oh completely like it it was like being maced or something like (laughs) and what was that from I That's think it's just, ragweed, but but I'm not entirely sure. I haven't and it's just it in the in the air. Yeah, it's pollen. It's um, wow. It's like it's crazy. So right now I'm confined to to inside the house. Is it how like long that? Is the, how long is it gonna last? I hope that it will like start dying down this week. But mm. I I think the season can be pretty long actually. <sighs> oh, so I better find a solution. So. Yeah. Maybe it's like that terrible Mark Wahlberg film where the uh, the pollen gets everybody and kills. Do you, have you seen that one? Is it The Happening? <laughs> oh, it's. Uh, I mean, it might be worth watching for comedic value. It's the the pollen. I think killer it, it, pollen. It, yeah, it makes people commit suicide. I think is what he's doing. <laughs> and then people, there's this weird scene where people are running away from the pollen, and it's <laughs> it's definitely not the the best villain in the movie i've ever seen put it that way i have not seen that one <laughs> i'm sure it's called the happening but i might i might have got it wrong which is a terrible name as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah I th- someone's just said that i'm the expert of awful movies which i think might actually be be true <laughs> um so i know about if we go back to to wardroom and get a little bit on topic i mean the new album had some insane success in the uh, in the charts. We spoke about it a little bit before the podcast. I mean, do you want to just kind of recap where it got to? And I guess also, did, did you ever expect it to do as well as it, it did? Uh, no, I actually, I'm, I'm careful having like too much expect, expectations. Um, it, it Because you never know. And it, it's not really my focus point and it's not really the most important thing the most important thing is that it's something that um that i'm I'm proud of and uh and happy with and and the rest becomes a a bonus but it is of course well we we got we got like um well looking at how how the singles were being received we we this was almost the album came out almost a year after uh, we released the first single, um, the the song "Gro." Um, and and of, so, I I guess the 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 response to to that and and Livia Bag, which is not on the album, uh, and and um, Kvitran and so on, it it. it gave me at least an uh, uh, yeah an idea that that um, that uh, it was resonating speaking to people um, so um, um, but I don't know uh, so when when it came out it, uh, it I was very surprised the day after the release when we saw that it, it the album was charting as number one on um, iTunes worldwide um with some pretty big names um <laughs> uh, underneath uh, so that was a little bit absurd uh of course and and also charting charting um on the main uh, second place on the main charts in germany which is perhaps 
alongside the US, the biggest music market on the planet. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was pretty crazy. Um, we're, we're kind of an uh, unlikely candidate uh, in a way to do so. So, um, uh, but, but then again, it's charts. It, it doesn't really matter to me. I don't really care personally about, about those things, but what it is, it, it's, it's an indication that that uh, Valduna is growing, of course, and mm. and that that um, the music is um, is finding its ways out there in the world, and that's uh, that's of course uh, uh, something I'm proud of, and and uh, something um, um, which is really cool to see. Yeah, absolutely. I think it shows the the passion of your fans as well. The, absolutely. You know, they 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 really get behind you and and make sure that they you know they get the downloads the streams and and push it up up the charts which is i i really i i maybe everybody says this but i i truly believe we have the most uh, fantastic fans on this this planet it, it's so um yeah just um it seems very like a very much like a family in a way mm -hmm. uh, people are very supportive people are um it's very it's a very um uh, it's a very broad audience, so so it's people from all sorts of age group and uh, um, from all over the planet, um, and um, I guess that 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 kind of mix um, is a good thing. Um, there aren't many platforms that connects uh, people like that in, in a way, mm -hmm. um, and. Um, yeah, so so I think that's a good thing co coming together for, for for the greater good, not the greater good being Wadruna, but perhaps some of the things we are we are, we are highlighting in our our music in our songs, mm -hmm. uh, which yeah, I I think personally is 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 worth remembering, and I guess the core of this album is it's very much about animism and our our relation to to our surroundings, of course. It focuses perhaps a bit more on on the human aspect of of things than the previous albums. It goes more into details on on certain concepts. Um, and although I'm I'm not into politics or or preaching and and uh, all of that stuff, I, I kind of detest it. If my music has a or our music has a message, it would be that it, it kind of subtly promotes um yeah uh, this animistic thought that um that nature is something sacred mm -hmm. um plain and simple it, it doesn't have to be a religious thing or or a yeah or a spiritual thing um it, it's it's an attitude basically mm -hmm. an attitude that i think we lost a long time ago even even when we still were pagan it, it was kind of mm -hmm. um um yeah people were moving away from that you mm -hmm. you you see it in in what gods are becoming more popular or important the the more the the movable odin for instance uh and and so on the the gods connected to the earth and and place became um slowly less less important uh, so i guess this this process happened a long 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 time ago um but but uh, yeah, I, I, I definitely think it's it's something uh, something worth um, thinking a little bit about. Uh, it's a pretty simple idea, and the impact it has is, is so massive. Um, Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, these dangerous ideas that you you are too small to make a difference. That that's so d uh, dangerous because it mm -hmm. makes you passive and and. Uh, yeah. For, for sure. I, I think that everything's so doom and gloom at the minute, though, that there's never a positive spin on anything. It's always very negative. And I think that doesn't help people with their opinion of, like, I, what can I do, just me? Because they're, they're kind of, all these big problems are shown on the news or online all the time. It makes people feel very insignificant. And I think if people's attitudes change and it has to come from the top, in my opinion, anyway, from the media sources, 
and put a positive spin on things. And rather than being very doom and gloom and, you know, we fucked the plan up and this and that, and this is what's going to happen. And rather than that, put put it in a positive light of, look, this is what we can do to get back to nature and these small incremental steps and then show people it that way rather than this very much sort of cataclysmic, apocalyptic kind of attitude that they have. Um, the, I think it certainly kind of puts pressure on people and, and takes them away from that feeling yeah, that they can uh, do anything. Uh, yeah, and also I think I think uh, it, it it's it's a good idea to to sort of uh, shield yourself a little bit from from social media platforms and and media in general uh, mm -hmm. be, because these these info wars that are that are going mm -hmm. on it's uh, um, it, it doesn't do any good um, mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, you, you you even see it like in, in in. Of course, broadly speaking, but you can zoom in to just the pagan community being pagan online. It's just a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> to, the truth. To, yeah, it, and I think a lot of people feel it as well. It's like um, people. There's so much, so many gurus uh, out there trying to claim the truth and it's so much argument over insignificant things that doesn't really matter to you in your life if you just shut off uh, sh shut off the machine or or the mm. screen um so is... be, being a little bit um aware of these things and and yeah shielding yourself uh from those things is uh, i think will will have a pretty massive effect on on uh, on you personally as well. Mm -hmm. I agree. I was going to say something about this uh, subject of your fan base. Um, yeah, sure. You guys have a stable, very loyal fan base that very much feels like a family. Personally, part of it myself. Um, I know that uh, Dan is too. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, but I think you know with these. Uh, it, the, the subject of animism and this way of thinking about the world, I think you're also managing to draw in more and more people and also people that don't necessarily come from the same sort of like communities, so to speak, as, as the, the, the stable fan base uh, mm -hmm. or what was a, originally the stable fan base. And one of the things that I, um, I you know, find very fascinating about going to a award runner show is that there are so many like different people like and you know here in Colorado where I've seen award runa like you get you get people who you know came from suburbs in in Kansas uh you get people who you know are heavy metal fans you get hippies you get um like university professors like all kinds of people like it's all yeah. over the place yeah and I think that's because of that um, quote unquote ide ideological appeal of animism as well. I um, recently gave a, a, a talk on my, my book, Also True for Beginners, um, mm. which was sort of like an, an, an odd book <laughs> that I wrote. Uh, um, and and I've, I, I talked about Nordic animism as, as a concept for, for, for my, my own sort of like spiritual background, how I relate to the world. And and it was um, it was quite interesting to see how much that really resonated with the audience that was present there. Um, I got incredibly good feedback, and of course, I mean, a lot of this is uh, you know inspired by what you guys are saying and 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 talking about in Wadruna, when you uh, your lyrics. Um, I mean, I even I even quote you actually in my book, and it's actually mistranslated because I <laughs> fucked it up. <laughs> 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 I, I notified the publisher too late, I guess. Like, like, guys, 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 this word should be a different word. And they're like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but potato, uh, tomato. Aside, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that aside, I mean, it's, uh, I, I think that what Runa definitely manages to inspire so many different kinds of people out there um, that like, it's, uh, it's, it's really, it's beautiful to see. Because you're you're really seeing so many different people like awakening evening, if you ask me. Yeah, but it, it's uh, I think there is a great set of logics to it as well. Because 
well, if you if you boil it down to essence, within this tradition or, or way of thinking, it's it's the it's the idea that culture is shaped by your surroundings. That's the mechanism. Um, it's shaped by by your resources, uh, your profession, uh, and so on, and 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 the people in within that sphere creates that culture, and so 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 it snowballs and. That's the mechanism, and that mechanism is the same all over the planet. Where there is a, um, where these or uh, cult the origin of these cultures, um, and so I guess that's part of why a lot of these things speak to people from all over the place. They they can feel home, even even though my our our music has has this uh, Nordic sort of wrapping around it it's the the things we are singing about are are universal they are timeless um mm -hmm. and i i think that's part of it and and that also when when you go into the musicality of it of it all um when you go far enough back in time you see it within the tonalities you see it within the instruments um how, how they are used there are so many striking similarities that binds it all together if you just go far enough back in time. So I guess in a way, these a lot of these things that they, they're coded in our DNA uh, or or in our I don't know mm -hmm. in our uh, deep within our our, our human memory. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. So <clears throat> there. Is, uh, point is, I I think there is a great set of logics to it as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which of yeah. course makes all of the, uh, this segregation ideas just makes so it makes it all so illogical and and silly um mm -hmm. uh, dividing all of these things because it's it, why it's the same mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a, a yeah, lot yeah. is the same uh, at least um and 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 the things that aren't the same that that just makes it interesting it it, it fascinates mm -hmm. um uh, yeah, it, it enriches uh, it all and and what is the Nordic or Norse or or whatever culture if not a um, a result of the thousands of years of uh, people moving and and uh, cultures merging and and meeting mm -hmm. and and so on that that's what it is the things we are we are seeing today digging up from the earth that is it that's mm -hmm. the result of of the these many meetings throughout the course of time absolutely i think you can go further than that and say that all of humanity has been that like it's yeah that's all we've ever done is is migrate places and make new little communities and then move on and trade yeah. with each other and and yeah. yeah sometimes we're shitty to each other but at the end of the day yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> it, nobody originated from one single place it's all at some point you traveled there and it's weird how people draw these lines at a certain year and go okay well if you if your people weren't here before this time then you can't have any of it it's like yeah and it for me it's kind of a comforting thought you know um there is a lot of you know scare fear mongering um that mm -hmm. that you're losing your ways and and that it's a lot of focus on the prob problematic sides of of uh, mm -hmm. cultures uh, meeting and merging and and it it's always happened uh, yeah. it always will happen so it, it's better to just um yeah it doesn't have to be a conflict no i, I, I we spoke about this this before in the podcast and i don't want to get you into a political discussion <laughs> i know you no. like to uh, <laughs> to avoid those but i think we, we you know we we've said it before how it's I think it's people's insecurities within themselves of that if you allow somebody else into it, that in some way takes away away from you or you're somehow losing it. And it's the same way people have it with not just quote unquote their cultures, just some people, if their friend gets a job, a really well paid job, and they're now earning more money than them, they have this almost insecurity of jealousy of, oh well they're doing so good why am i not doing that good or in some that somehow has a negative effect on their life and it just it's just i don't know whether it's a, an innate feeling or where it comes from that people just have this thing of where if somebody else enjoys what you like then suddenly you lose something i guess it's almost like 
when you when you really like a band and then they get really popular and loads of other people like it and then suddenly the the original people go oh well you know they've sold yeah. out now they've sold yeah, out now s- sell out <laughs> yeah and it's like it's like that idea it's like well i like it when nobody else really likes it but if too many people like it then suddenly that's not cool anymore and it's like well yeah. why can't everyone just enjoy it if it's so good people who only listen to the demos <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> so it. it's a whole whole category of, of, <laughs> yeah. um to go go back directly to the music i mean I'm sure you will have, have thought of this, but for me, the lyrics are, are, are there, but as a, as a stupid Englishman, I have no idea what any of them they mean. And, and, I, assume, and I mean that with no offense, <laughs> but I assume that most people that listen to it are probably in my position. Um, so when you were talking before about how it connects with people, certainly on my level, it connects on the... Li- the lyrics are there and obviously you hear the voices, but it's more about the, the music and it has a, a much deeper connection. And for me, I always find those are the most those are the best for me musically, where mm. it's not where I'm not focusing on the lyrics, the music mm. kind of just whisks you away. And it's yeah. that very much emotional feeling. Um and there's very few bands that do that with me. You guys are one and um, Fondham when he was on he was another one his music certainly does that um yeah. and it's this very special thing when you yeah, take the you lyrics know, I, away I, I think um i think even for scandinavian or, or norwegian people even a lot of um the lyrics are even are quite veiled because of the language i use the words <laughs> i choose how i play with both Old old Nordic, uh, yeah, proto Scandinavian language and and uh, yeah, the way the way my great grandfather would would talk, for instance, or or yeah, kind of mi- mix between mm-hmm. um, between Old Norse and and uh, and uh, contemporary Norwegian or old con- contemporary Norwegian, um, and it creates kind of a a veil which is allows you to to sort of dive more into the musicality of, of the language but at the same time the words are there with very specific purpose and i i strongly believe that um if it's well if it's done from the heart and and uh with purpose with intention um it's added value mm-hmm. and that ad, added value tra- um, tr- uh, transmits whether or not it's perceived uh, consciously or subconsciously it's it's there um mm. and yeah i i i think uh, you can definitely enjoy the music uh, and connect to it profoundly so um whether or not you understand the lyrics or not um mm-hmm. but um i definitely recommend people to we we always publish our our lyrics with translations in in our um at least the physical formats. We try to do it also on like iTunes and so on. That it, it's uh, there is a booklet there. Uh, not for some reason, not all countries have it, even though we've tried several times. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I do think it's an important thing to, um, or at least for for those who wants to go deeper into the mm-hmm. material, uh, there is a lot of. Um, I think uh, upon lyrics a little bit like. Like Hovamol, you you have, you have something for the farmer, you have something for the warrior, and you have something for the, for the sorcerer, uh, <laughs> and I I kind of have the same thought that there, there are if you add the the scholar or or the nerd uh, into that equation, that's kind of uh, how I think my my lyrics are um, because there's a lot of uh, <coughs> well philosophy or or just poetry that i try to sort of do after inspired by the old poetic traditions um but but in terms of contents that the, of course there is a meaning that is more direct but always like the old skulls try to work with many different layers also mm-hmm. in terms of how i approach these themes um there is potentially a lot 
a lot of nerdy details that you only find in like the deepest buried books that nobody reads anymore. Um, <laughs> Maybe Matthias does. Oh, for uh, sure. Yeah. For sure, uh, Matthias does. That, yeah, try to sort of spice it up with, with these small uh, details that, uh, yeah, for me, it's important that if you, if you well, if I approach a subject, I, I, I want to know as much as I can about it. It, it, it even though it's, it's not about copying the past, it needs to originate in something factual. Um, uh, uh, yeah, finding out how we know what we know and so on uh, about a given subject and, and yeah, digging really deep into that um, uh, before going into the more creative processes. I was just going to say something about this. Uh, 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 Dan, when now that you're listening to Ward Runa and the, the, listening to music in another language you're having the experience that the rest of the world usually <laughs> has with english music i have so many nonsense lyrics from michael jackson in particular for some reason in my head <laughs> yeah. from when i was a kid <laughs> it's like i i don't i don't know like half of the the actual lyrics in the songs but i know the sounds like da -da 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 -da, <laughs> going on in my head <laughs> yeah you, I mean, you'll know them now, though. Now you speak better English than I do. <laughs> well, I, I, I could probably like, yeah, pick them up. But you know, like a song like "Beat It," I mean, it's so like ingrained in my head, the the nonsense that I don't think I can actually sing the song in actual <laughs> English. <laughs> I mean, I let's hear it. Let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that would be. Uh... That would be a fun episode. <laughs> just I was just trying to recite or remember Michael Jackson songs. <laughs> I mean, we all have that that one, that one song. I'm trying to think if I have one where you are convinced that the word is something, and that's it. And then maybe one day you'll just sing it out loud, and then your friend will be like, "What the fuck did you just say?" <laughs> like, that's not. And you listen back like, "Yeah, that's that doesn't even make any sense." <laughs> But I know I've always had little ones that, I, that you just pick up on. And I mean, sometimes you music, obviously, the lyrics mean a lot in, in some songs, particularly, you know, the, the lyrics are very, are very deep. But I think for, for a lot of stuff, it's all about the, the way that the music makes you feel and the, yeah. the lyrics can almost come as a second, a second mm -hmm. part to that. Yeah, and it depends on the music, I think. Some some forms of music, uh, even some forms of performance, um, kind of, I, I feel that the lyrics are, are more, or at least I, I pay more attention to it in, in certain mm -hmm. certain formats. Um, and very often it's it's the music of it that, that uh, comes true. And mm -hmm. I, I want to say another thing too, when it comes to the subject of like uh, veiled lyrics and uh, that, that take a lot of uh, uh, effort, I would say, to decode. Mm. Um, I mean, that in and of itself also has um, a, a lot of, a, a, what can you call it, like relevance or it carries a lot of meaning in context of ritualized um, mm. activities of various kinds, right? I mean, we know this from... Um, Islam is perhaps like the, uh, the, 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 the most widely known example of having a, a sacred language, right, uh, in Arabic. You, essentially, you're not supposed to uh, translate the Quran um, into another language. It happens anyway, but, but you're not supposed to uh, mm -hmm. because but Arabic is sort of like the, the holy language. And yeah, this also, you know, um, it, we see similar things in, in, with, uh, in Judaism, with Hebrew, and also sometimes with Latin in Christianity, but in, perhaps not to the same extent as we see it in, in Islam. And the whole reason for that is, of course, that there is something magical to a language that you don't understand, right? Mm -hmm. There's something um, that it carries special import it carries mysticism like there, there's so much uh, involved in 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 uh, interacting with a language that you don't necessarily understand 
in a ritual context as well. And just that, mm. of course, and you know, to me means that your music is you know primed for 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 ritual interaction as well. Uh, exactly, exactly. And as you say, yeah, I imagine um, trans transition period Scandinavia. Nobody understood stood a, a single word of the sermons. Everything mm -hmm. was Latin uh, uh, and so on. So and and of course that that uh, increases the power of of the symbols being used, uh, the story sort of the, being told within the the theater, uh, ritual theater, in a way, becomes much more powerful when you when you have that sort of natural distance of with it, of of language there. Mm. Um, but yeah, also working with layers in in poetry, it's I think the 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 old sculpts knew um, knew that uh, that speaking in images was a really good tool for memory as well. You know, in in the oral society, I, I think that's it's also uh, um, yeah uh, very yeah it's easier to to remember an image than mm -hmm. it is to remember um all the lines but and that's what a lot of these you know a line is very often one image mm -hmm. and then the next line is another image um and mm -hmm. and so you you t tell the story that way and you remember it that way so it's, it's quite a clever clever way of doing it mm -hmm. I'd, I'd love to know how how good their memories were back at I, th I well, think as, as we've as we've come more into mo the modern age, I think our memories have obviously just got worse and worse. Um, because Sarah tells me something, and I forget it ten minutes later. And actually, I really try. I've tried to listen to it, but I've just it just slips out my mind. But obviously, we there's, have there's computers good, now. There's good evidence that uh, social media actually deteriorates your memory. Of course, yeah, just think does. about that. <laughs> because, yeah, and and. and cellular phones yes. <laughs> yeah, you can, you, i don't got google yeah. there you don't have to remember it do you you can just go oh what's that google it. yeah like you mm -hmm. just don't no, but when when um when um when they were uh collecting the songs in in uh, in in the karelian the karelian tra tradition in finland and so on um it's really cool to see how uh, there you get evidence of this oral tradition, the, the mm -hmm. sort of the last remains of how how much these people remembered. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of these singers, they, they had a repertoire of um, maybe a thousand songs where e each of the songs had maybe a couple of hundred verses, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> which is just insane. And mm -hmm. it, it's really uh, cool to see how they describe um remembering as well they okay. they i think one description is is that um it's like uh, uh unballing um uh, a, a ball of yarn basically that's the image mm. of of how they see the memory they they sort of it's kind of a ritual they open the chest of 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 uh of songs mm -hmm. um, i imagine it's almost one line will trigger the memory of the next line yes. and it, it's not necessarily word for word I, I, I guess maybe stand-up comedians might do the same sort of thing where it's not it's not the set word for word it's kind of a premise yeah. and then you go yeah kind of work just, your way through it and it triggers the next memory which triggers the next memory and you kind of yeah have that domino effect just, yeah um, and and for, for musicians melody is also a tool for memory yes um, yes that's yeah. a really important component to it right because that basically creates sort of a scaffolding on which you can put everything all the information yeah. Yeah. um there's uh what, what was his name albert lord right was he the one who went to the balkans and studied the serbian singers in mm -hmm. i think it was the 50s 40s or 50s, I can't remember, probably not the 40s. It's like full of war back then. Uh, but but in the 50s, I love the, <laughs> the irony of us talking about memory. It's true. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> to remember something. Sitting there trying to remember. He what he came back with was basically they 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 these guys, they're like it, they, they sing these very, very long narratives in very much the same way as the Karelian singers. 
um, and they use stock narratives. So they basically have like these um, these these uh, uh, stock scenes that 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 combine in different ways, and then they add their own flavor to it around it so uh, the best the best example that we have from scandinavia is the ramsund stone from sweden which gives us the story of sigurd the dragon slayer hmm. right it has the tree where we have birds sitting in it and his horse that is tied to it we, we have him uh slaying the dragon down in a little corner and the dragon sort of like frames the entire image um, he's like poking it with the sword from beneath. And then we also have him sitting, uh, uh, like um, sticking his thumb in his mouth as he's just um, burnt it on uh, the dragon's heart. We have the decapitated Regin lying over there in a the corner and then some random dog for some reason. And this all basically <laughs> comes together as that, like the story of Sigurd the dragon slayer who kills Fafnir, um, and then it's directed by Regin to go roast the, the heart so Regin can eat it. And uh, then he's like sitting there and as he's trying out to, 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 to figure out if the, the heart is, is roasted enough, he burns his finger so he sticks it in the mouth. And then he, under, uh, he, he tastes the blood of the dragon and understands the bird's speech. That's the birds in the tree right next to him, right? And that's when he realizes that Regin is going to take Fafnir's gold and buzz off. And so he kills him, hence the decapitated Regin, right? <laughs> so you have all of that in, in, in the largest runic carbon uh, that we know of. It's about four meters long, as mm. far as I remember. And, and this, is, this is some storyteller back then who, who knew that story and has put all of this imagery in there. There's several of them from, from um, you know, early thousands, I think in Sweden, hmm. um, that, that's, the, that's the time period. And of course, we also know them from Norwegian, um, um, the, the Norwegian state churches as well. There's uh, yes. carvings of, of him there. So, so that's Just, like such okay. a good, good example of those like stock uh, Im images and elements of, of, of a narrative. Just to just to play back to that, because um, I'm intrigued now. Yeah. If everything else on that stone is so precise, mm -hmm. do you think the dog has some meaning? It can't yes. just be a random dog. Do you think there is something that maybe has been missed or lost in translation through time and this, this part of the story that maybe we just don't yeah. know? Yeah, it's uh, it's actually the, the image is very specific. We know that uh, Regin is the decapitated fellow because he's got the bellows from a smithy lying right next to him and also a hammer. Um, so, so we know that this is him, right? Because he's a smith in the story. Um, is it a dog or is it a is it a badly is it a dog or is it a badly drawn otter? <laughs> that's the, that's another question, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's uh, so th this is what they've uh, scholars have theorized that we're dealing with the otter here because that has you know reference to the origin of the story right where Loki kills the otter to uh, um, and then then they have to pay uh, where guild as it is called uh, for for the otter's death to Hreidma mm -hmm. and all of that stuff and that's the whole complication of, of the story. Um, and then you have to ask. Quite quite otters are certainly quite dog-like in they can in the especially like the the face if you're not getting the detail of the fur on there i guess the the, yeah. the shape of the head is is quite is quite dog-like but the question is then like what why why is that uh, why is the otter there to to signal that element of the story because it happens quite farther in uh, or you know happens in the beginning of the story and you have the other elements in, in far, later on and so on mm -hmm. there's been a lot of discussion back and forth like what does that uh figure actually mean uh how how is how does it tie into the story could also be an element that has seemed to have been lost mm -hmm. in in the, the oral retellings and up until the point where they're written down in the what is it, 14th century is that when we have the rusunga saga from and of course, we have the uh, poetic versions in 1270, and we have Snurri's version, presumably from 1220, right? So yeah. 
yeah. So there's some, that something might have been missed there, or we we don't really know. But I think the scholarly consensus is that it's the otter, and it basically refers to the origin of the story. So, well, what do you think? Because you called it a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I I think it's actually an element that's been lost. Uh, it makes more sense in context of the of the image itself because all of the other elements of the, that image are so close together in a narrative context that I think that it's probably a dog that we don't we don't know why it's there like it's it, you, the the purpose of of that narrative component has simply you know been lost in time I mean everything's always better with a dog so maybe it's just they just want to make it better Maybe some have also theorized that it's a reference to. I don't know. The I, I I just got a dog, and and sleep is not better with a dog. <laughs> oh, wow. it'll, is it'll... it a puppy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That yeah. I think you're gonna struggle for a little bit. Yeah, especially when they tell you to ignore. Like the the advice is to ignore them, isn't it? It's ignore yeah, them. Don't don't give them attention. It's like yeah, but. It's a it's cute crying. little puppy. How, how, yeah. Yeah. How, how am I going to ignore it? Yeah. We, it's our, our two, uh, third, 12, 12 now. Um, and we, we were going to get a puppy and we, we got one for a few days from, uh, from someone that I know. And you forget how hard a puppy is. Like he was, he was a nightmare and one of our other dogs was just like no i'm not having this because he's he's older in life now and he just he was like i don't want a puppy around here and made it pretty clear like he wasn't nasty but he was quite clear that he didn't want it um yeah. so which is why we didn't end up keeping him but it was just even just in we had him about like two days and it was like fucking this is hard like you forget yeah, how like you have to just it's like watch having them. a baby again yeah yep. You I mean, gotta I, watch them. They chew everything, and you gotta watch them because they need to wee. Because you gotta run outside with them. It's just, it's a my, whole thing. My four or five year old dog. I can't remember how old she is at this point. I mean, she always wakes me up at five, four o'clock. Not not four o'clock. Six o'clock in the morning, basically just whining at me until I give uh, I feed her. Like that's. <laughs> I mean, I'm planning on getting a watchdog for my dog because we we have um, too much scary wildlife up here. Yeah. So my, okay. uh, my dog is a bit of a snack to a mountain lion or something like that. Um, so I'm gonna, gonna get myself a giant German shepherd that can like scare them off <laughs> to, to watch my dog. Um, <laughs> That's really meta. <laughs> right yeah. a dog to watch your dog <laughs> so but the, the thing is that that would be like you know going through the whole puppy thing right so my dog will have to raise that dog to um or help me doing it so so i hope for some sort of like synergy here where my already whiny annoying dog can take care of the other whiny annoying dog and so it's big enough to take care of my whiny annoying dog it's, it's a whole <laughs> thing <laughs> It sounds like a circle of life of uh, totally. children looking after their parents. <laughs> so we um, we were going to look at Midsummer because when this comes out, it will be this comes out on the Thursday. So Midsummer will be in two two days from when this releases. So yeah, I thought it would be fun to to take a look at what Midsummer actually is and where it comes from. I guess. Matthias or, no, or I know either who, whoever wants because I certainly don't trust me with it because I have no idea <laughs> I can uh, I can offer some insight in terms of like when um, Midsummer is sort of uh, uh, shows up historically at, at least as far back as we can detect it and it's uh, uh, in a Scandinavian context um, it's the 1500s it's a a influence from you know saint john's eve and that's you know how it's also in many ways still celebrated in in scandinavia in sweden they have these like nice little um um uh, midsummer stone um which is basically a uh, a, a like a maypole yeah maypole yeah decorated maypole okay. 
um, that they um, you know, put flowers in their hair and then they dance happily around. In Denmark, we burn, we burn a witch instead <laughs> on a giant bonfire. Um, I think it's a little, you know, depending. In Norway, it's just a fire. It's just a fire, so you you, you yeah. guys aren't. You have them all all over the place, or yep. used to. Now it's more like, it seems like it's more concentrated. Uh, but like when I grew up, it, it was fires all over the. You could see across the fjord there was fires everywhere. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Oh wow! So that's almost like our our bonfire night, I guess, mm -hmm. in that sense of just. <laughs> Everyone has got something to get rid of. Just set it on fire because you're not going to get caught. Exactly. So but that's. Uh, so, and I think Olaus Magnus actually talks about them. Um, yeah. In 1555, in his history of the North, um, and um, uh, but I mean, obviously, this is an older tradition than the 1500s. Um, it's hard to say exactly where, how far it goes back. If we start digging into the calendrical aspects of, of uh, the midsummer, it of course was an important um, date for the early farming societies and has been part of a cultural complex that has existed in Scandinavia for millennia, um, I'm sure, and elsewhere in, in Europe, of course. Um, the, the Middle East as well, and, and, and Africa for that matter, Asia. Um, and, and, and it's been sort of a, 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 um, in, a, a date in the calendar for which you can calibrate your, your um, calendrical cycles that usually would follow the moon, which um, is of course um, all over the place in, in terms of um, keeping track of time. So, so that's a, so when when you say calendrical, mm -hmm. what do you mean by that? <laughs> you know, a calendar, right? Okay, I um, wasn't sure if there was more to it or if it was just that simple. Oh, uh, it's it it is essentially just that simple. But in the sense okay. of like, so so of course, like time reckoning back then in in pre Christian times, um, it was was a little more complicated than it is now. And, and, you know, as soon as you just like look into what is the origin of the calendar that we have now, you realize that uh, it's sort of like the, the, the best we could do mathematically in terms of, of aligning our uh, time reckoning with um, the actual cycle of, uh, uh, of uh, you know, the, the, the earth going around the sun and all that stuff, mm -hmm. right? It's not entirely, uh, you know, accurate. So therefore we have, um, what do you call those? Um, uh, years leap, in, in, leap year, leap exactly. Years. Yeah. So leap year. is it a quarter of quarter of a year out every every year or something? Uh, something like that. I'm. I am no. Well, I guess so because the leap year is every four years. Mm -hmm. So the theory is that in Scandinavia they had a so-called sunbound moon calendar, which or lunisolar calendar, which means that. Um, every uh, third year, you would have to recalibrate with adding adding a, an extra month, basically. Um, so you get a thir 13th month every third year, right? So for two years, uh, you're basically losing out of half of a month. And then you get another, um, then you add that uh, together to a month for the third year. And you would be able to uh, reconcile that by the solstices, right? So, mm -hmm. so using the winter solstice and the summer solstice as these two um, mid midpoints in the year, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. So that means, of course, then we may assume that midsummer was an important holiday, or or some kind of uh, day of festivity, or or the time around it at least um, would be important. In but just to be just to be clear, the the midsummer, I'm guessing, is that when you start going the other way, where the days don't get any longer. Yeah, it's that it's that yeah. point in time it's, where it's basically two days after, or mm -hmm. one or two days after the sun has turned. Yes. Okay. And obviously, the winter solstice is the other way, where it starts to get exactly get, get a little bit better. Yeah. Winter solstice, you you sort of go into the life cycle of the year. That's when nature is born in a way 
and and uh, the summer solstice you you enter the death cycle of mm -hmm. the year when uh, okay yeah go yeah. into the harvest and and there's and so a theory on. too that sort of a, it was in pre-christian times perceived as sort of a uh, uh basically going going towards or through the realm of death uh like mm. we start on that from midsummer and then we pass into the realm of death and then uh we emerge again on uh midwinter and then come come out into the the realm of life in that sense um and yeah so of course saint john's and all that stuff is calibrated towards jesus's birthday and all that funky stuff mm -hmm. And in Scandinavia, we have a tendency to celebrate the evenings instead of the actual days. So it's not the, the 25th, it's always the 24th instead. So, so that's, uh, okay. that's, that's a curious feature. That's why <laughs> like Christmas is on the 24th in, in Scandinavia instead. Of... Yeah, and it's, it's, if you go into the, the whole, um, a lot of the folklore, and folk medicine in in terms of uh, in terms of midsummer it's it's just packed with these lo lots of strange traditions and um in terms of everything from marriage to to uh, or or finding your potential spouse um mm -hmm. uh to to um gathering the dew um before the sun comes up again for for medicinal purposes and even um yeah if you're sick you're supposed to to drink it before you uh, you you speak the first words in the morning and so on uh, even uh, there there is this tradition of of doing uh, it's called uh, dugbad which basically means dew bath so you would get naked and roll in the grass Mm. Um, and these were all, all night night uh, activities, of course. Yeah, um, also gathering the... flowers from ni or pl nine different plants and so on for medicinal mm -hmm. purposes. A lot of there was a lot of like um, in in uh, esoteric ways uh, or traditions. I, I think there was a lot of <laughs> gathering going going on that night. Yeah, gathering. You're also supposed to stay up. Uh, on, it's, and see the, the the sun rise, yeah, and the day after, yeah. No, it's a, yeah, that's true. There's like so many, so many things involved here. Yeah, got awful cramp. If anyone heard me just moan there in the background, <laughs> 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 I just got cramp in my hamstring. I like shot back from the desk. <clears throat> so if anyone just heard me, they make a, a weird noise in the background. That's what that was. Welcome to old manhood. Right you know, you two, you, I mean, you two held it together well there. Because I just shot back from the desk and was like, ah. Um, no, I think this is, this is beautifully, oh, it beautifully links back to what we were talking about earlier about how being linked to the earth. And it just shows how, how connected people were and, you know, running off the, off the cycles and, like you said, bathing in the, in the dew. Um, yeah, but th this is not old. This is like hmm. under, well, there are records of this like uh, under 100 years back hmm. in time, hmm. you know. So this is, a lot of these traditions have, have uh, sort of prevailed through, hmm. through time and, and of course changed and, and got, got the, yeah, taken on new directions and so on. But um, you can clearly see when you, when you sort of, Get an overview and and connect the dots. It's like with the with the Nisse traditions and and uh, the the Santa traditions in in uh, in um, or Yule traditions in in Scandinavia. It's it's like so many of the same thing. So many branches, but the root mm -hmm. um, is it, quite clear. It has the same root. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean like. I, I don't um, I don't know about your parents, uh, Aina, but um, I mean mine have definitely been been doing some of these traditions in different mm. ways. Or grandparents have been doing yeah. some of these traditions, so it's very oh, much. Mine, mine wouldn't have a fucking clue what they were. <laughs> like they would, they just wouldn't know at all. And I think that's that's interesting. Like obviously the the path that you grow up on, mm. um, and you you take with like is it you two. I've obviously kind of grown up amongst it, whereas for me, I've kind of come into this 
I've taken a path completely different to, to the rest of my family and, and entered into this, this world, I guess. Um, and it's just trying to discover it. And it, I find it so fascinating. Um, I suppose just, just how, I think just how connect, like, like say how connected people were. And I find it so sad how disconnected we, we seem to be now with, with the earth and just, cause I, I think amongst us who, who say you know like I'm going I'm going I'm going to go do something for midsummer I'm sure you two both will be as well but the people outside of this circle who who don't kind of know us is they would they probably almost find it laughable to go and do something on on midsummer it's quite it's quite sad but to probably to the majority of people they'd be like what the fuck are you doing that for and and it's yeah, it's well. sad that there's that disconnect now with the earth it's almost people almost find it funny that people want to show respect to the to the earth and mm. we just we've just become become so disconnected as we've be, we've grown into these big cities and uh sort of global communities yeah well it's um uh, you don't need an excuse to to uh it well it's a good excuse to to make a bonfire <laughs> <laughs> plain, plain and simple um and and uh, well for me it's you know you can you can paint everything in these complicated mythologies and so on. But for me, it's a, it's a pretty simple thing. Those two sort of, um, or the four corners, they, they, they have kind of a, and, and well, they represent the transition. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I like these, I very much like these transitions uh, and and this image of of yeah either going into the life cycle of the year and and well it's a good time like to um, yeah let things go uh, mm -hmm. uh, do some sort of can be a like a whether or not you you write something on a note and throw it in that fire something you want to put behind you to make mm -hmm. room for new stuff um, and then you you do the same within uh, when, uh, in the next sort of um yeah entering into the life cycle of the year it, it can be it can be so many so many things and it's so how simple or complicated you want it, it it's just a good time to turn inwards a little bit reflect mm -hmm. and then connect with your your surroundings and of course the nerd i am i of course love these strange things and i i, I well, I want to understand why, um, why people were doing it and so on. Mm. Um, uh, if there is something to it and, and, uh, and so on, but that's, that's my, uh, the, the esoteric side. It doesn't, you know, I, the last couple of years I'm, I've been traveling so much, uh, a lot, especially around midsummer. There's always a lot of festivals or, or, or things going on. So. Um, I rarely get to to do that kind of thing. So then you simplify. Um, so if if you if you don't have like a, a, the opportunity to burn a fire, then light a candle, turn mm -hmm. inwards. You know, it's um, um, doesn't have to be so complicated. We don't have to complicate it. Yeah, um, this this that's another thing that um, I personally, I mean, having grown up with the bonfires, I. Uh, it's uh, it's hard for me to not always have that as a uh, opportunity because in Colorado there's usually a fire pen somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm, I'm not gonna be the one who's like, oh yeah, my traditions. Let me just burn <laughs> yeah. down the woods. <laughs> yeah, no, some people that. would definitely do that. <laughs> oh, for yeah. sure, for sure. I mean, there's something extremely hypnotic about fire, and mm -hmm. I don't know. It's medicine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know where that, that where that must come from, but. I, I certainly for me, I can't not look at it. And yeah, just... there, there has actually been uh, done quite quite a bit of studies on that. Um, uh, the effect of uh, a bonfire on depression and and so on that it actually has a significant effect on, on mm -hmm. it. Mm, um, yeah, that's true. Oh, wonderful. Oh, hey, we... by the way, it's just a fun fact. Uh, we had a really bad um, fire. A, like nature fire a couple of years ago it was actually started by a danish guy 
uh, <laughs> who was uh, who was living in the of woods. Of course, of course, <laughs> <laughs> he was he was living in the woods and he was apparently like smoking meat or something like that. And then <laughs> then he started a, a huge fire. Turns out he was living in the country legally too, so <laughs> on an expired visa. Um, <laughs> I'm not not going to go down that route myself. Yeah, so I want to say one thing about this. Um, the Danish tradition of like putting a a witch on the bonfire is like that is that is kind of fucked up to be honest. <laughs> um, Indeed. <laughs> so basically, what 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 the Danes do at St John's Eve is that they uh, uh, pretend human sacrifice, right? Like that's what it is. So, um, and and this is of course a uh, sort of like a I think it's a late. 18th century um, or early 19th century mock of uh, of the, the the witch burnings in the 1600s, and I don't know why it's still a thing, um, but obviously it's uh, it's an incredibly misogynistic bullshit tradition. Personally, don't don't put uh, effigies of women on on <laughs> bonfires myself. Um, usually we. Uh, the, what, our traditions have usually included just uh, singing songs at a bonfire, but uh, you can still go to places where people have those, and it's just like whoa. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, it's like we have we have the whole Guy Fawkes thing, right? On, on bonfire night, where people will make a little, I guess the same thing, like a dummy made of straw of Guy Fawkes, um, and throw him on the bonfire. <laughs> I mean, I like I, that obviously dates back to him trying to blow up parliament and right um, <laughs> so it's it's it, i guess it's just these things that stick with people and and most people probably don't even think twice about it it's just something yeah. that they've always done so they just put together this thing and they won't look into it as deep as or, or certainly what it might mean or what it might even symbolize they just go oh let's just make a witch and throw her on the bonfire yeah, it's just like you know. To me, the the the, the weird thing about all of this is that uh, you know Saint John's Eve is a Christian tradition, and uh, and here you go <laughs> pretending to sacrifice humans, right? Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> kind of well, like goes entirely against the whole theology of that thing. But yeah, <laughs> each to um, their own, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's let's start wrapping wrapping this up because I know we don't want to keep you too long. Um, I mean, Mateus, what what are your plans for for midsummer? Have you do you know what you're doing? I'm gonna have a nice little um, uh, hanging out in my backyard. I think we can still uh, pull off a little bonfire, so that's gonna happen. Barbecuing. Um, oh, nice. So like, I'm Americanizing. I got like this huge, huge barbecue that's like larger than me. And, um, is it a propane fueled one as well? Not of open. course, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, you... This is this is what we're talking about, like mixing traditions. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Anna? Have, have you have you got plans? Uh, um, no, but I, there will be some fire uh, for sure. Not on midsummer, but on the solstice. Mm. Okay. Um, nice. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think. I... But yeah, uh, some. Uh, some some uh, good food and yeah some reflection and and uh, hopefully hopefully yeah a fire in nature That's a little it. bit of meat as well yeah oh of, of course of course yeah i think i i might be returning to the the cave which is um for, for i know you were you won't have heard this story before other people at the winter solstice two years ago i went to a cave with um Okay, Pi with uh, I think you know Sean Parry um of Sacred yeah, yeah. Tattoo. Yeah, yeah. He he has one every year. So I went down there. I ended up getting a little bit too drunk on on the mead and and uh slipping and banging my head and I ended up with 13 oh. stitches up here. And I haven't been back to the cave since. So uh so you're giving it another try. <laughs> yeah. Depends, I think it depends on the weather, depending on where we're gonna be, whether it's gonna be outside or or in the cave, but I might have to face my fears. Mm. <laughs> there's a, there's a there's a Thor myth in this like there, there's like oh, this there's is something 
Yeah, this is very much Thor uh, in in a cave right there. This, this we'll Thor, add yeah. a add a uh, Gerrit or, or something, and then you like battled him, and uh, and you had like a, a a rock stuck in your head, and you know there I, you go. <laughs> I learned one yeah, thing: I've got the, thick the, head. The rock people uh, demanded some blood. It's yes. <laughs> oh, there was definitely some of that. There was it was quite funny because somebody, I think somebody must have rang the. Um, I don't know how much I can talk about this, but I'm, it's almost I rang the police because, you know, he said it's in a cave and maybe we're not technically meant to be there. Um, so <laughs> the police must have gone up the next day and had a had a little look in the cave and there's my blood all over the rocks. And, they, and then I think their natural instinct was, oh, they must have been like sacrificing animals. <laughs> so I, I'd actually parked my van at the bottom of the hill and my van sign written with the company so i got a phone call and he's like oh you know they to be fair the guy was was really nice he's like look we had a, a little bit of a complaint can you kind of just explain what was going on there was a bunch of blood i was like oh yeah about the blood i mean i can explain that one i was like that, that's mine i mean there's nothing weird going on i just fell over and i was like look you know we it was respectful and the guy was you know he was he was really cool about it he kind of understood and it was it was all uh it was all okay in the end <laughs> so. didn't, didn't sean put out some some songs didn't he record something from that cave I think. he did yes he, he, he recorded some i mean he's been meaning to put out some songs for for a while now and mm -hmm. i keep telling him to because he he does some really good stuff i've seen him yeah, perform live did. a few times i think he put out some stuff from from that cave yeah i i mean I remember definitely seeing put, something they definitely put so, put um an album out or some or something because they had um i remember them going when they were recording some bits and sigabody was there and mm. uh florian was playing the the nickel harper so i remember i definitely remember seeing something being recorded so it will be out there in the world <laughs> but he, he needs to do some more stuff i mean he's a he's a busy guy yeah he's uh he must be getting booked for tattoos non-stop um so yeah let's let's just jump in to see if anybody's got any questions for for watching we'll try not to keep up too much of your time Ayana. maybe you know just a quick five minutes um yeah and no see problem. see what anyone comes up with i mean the first one the only one i've seen so far which is uh a little bit silly is is the favorite ice cream of all three of us which i mean i think you can tell a lot about somebody by the type of ice cream so I know if you want to go first. Do uh, <laughs> no. well, I have to go first? Oh, Mateus, you go if you want. No, no, I think I know has to go first. Uh, <laughs> well, so Actually, we I'm not you. really an ice cream person. Yeah, well, well, maybe like soft ice. That's uh, that's uh, that's uh, something I like. Yeah, I'm. Um, yeah, so so I'm I'm partial to. Um, either like if it's uh, you know ice cream milk based ice then then it has to have licorice in it i mm. i love that um and if it's you know what we call soda soda water ice cream in danish um <laughs> uh, you know it's something fruit based then it's definitely lime or lemon like sort of like italian style so so yeah i'm i'm a, i'm fancy that way <laughs> no, yeah, mine, mine would be a raspberry ripple. That's there's something about fruit ice cream. I think I prefer to. Uh... <laughs> Dylan says he's he's happy now that we've answered his ice cream question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my question is, you guys, have you guys announced? You obviously, I, I remember seeing you've announced your tour. Um, when does that when does that start? Well, uh, everything is a bit of a mess. Uh, okay. So there are tours. We're moving around tours all the time. Um, Just trying to... Yeah, things are... Uh, yeah. The, the stuff this year, we don't know if, if it's going to happen or not. That's just the truth. Nobody knows. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to... Uh, yeah, we just have to have a plan A, B, and C. In, installed you... and and um but yeah i'm i'm having uh, my doubts 
there will be much happening this year, unfortunately. Um, but uh, have you yeah. got anything booked in the in the UK for me so I can come and see you? Yeah, there is something booked in in the in the spring. So there are, we are, okay. we're doing a tour in in the UK in the spring. That's the plan. Um, we've postponed it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was supposed to happen. Um, yeah, uh, lo yeah, last year than this year. But uh, we ha had to move it again. Mm -hmm. I imagine it's it's difficult trying to plan in these times. I know yeah, because everybody is booking. Everybody is mm -hmm. <laughs> everybody is sort of um, uh, doing the same thing, of course. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it, it's pretty tricky. You have to actually book several years ahead. Um, yeah. Okay. So it's it's tricky, but um, yeah, luckily I have good people doing that i don't have to i would get an ulcer or something um, yeah so, I, bet, I bet that's difficult to uh to keep changing things especially when nobody knows what's happening yeah so you just have to just have to be patient and and uh, yeah keep your cool and just uh, see what happens but yeah for this year i'm i'm not very hopeful unfortunately yeah that's unfortunate yeah, i think i think spring spring next year hope i mean if it's not, if I'm going to be a sad boy if, if if things aren't a little bit better by spring next year. Yeah, I think a lot. I think I think a lot of people will will. Uh... We're, we're completely back to normal, pretty much. Yeah, over here we yeah. we went from from Corona management being a complete disaster to you know it, most people getting vaccinated at this point. Mm. So like it's a. Uh, it's it's looking up over here so mm. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that it's not the same over there <laughs> no, no I was... there are still still lots of uh uncertainties and of, of course nobody knows how how one thing is it that well concerts and and these kind of arrangements uh, uh, nobody knows how to basically pull it off yet mm -hmm. do do mm. people need vaccine passes um do you need do they need quick testing solutions for the, the people that aren't vaccinated and, and so on? There, there are so many questions still. And then people are talking, oh, maybe there is a new wave coming in the fall and whatnot. So Seems I don't know. Like a new wave all the time. I don't, yeah, I don't want yeah, to talk about it. I don't know. About... It, it's, yeah, it, it's just uh, really complicated. So I, I, I'd rather be safe. Um, yeah, for, for sure. And I mean... When, it, that we can actually do it in a proper mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. um Maybe and, for and... a concert as well you want you want that interaction with other people and that closeness I, I wouldn't it would feel very weird if everyone had to be two meters away let alone you know you can't get as many yeah, people yeah. in there but even just keeping that distance there's something in my opinion anyway magical about being just crammed in there like sardines and yeah, not yeah. being able to move and that's yeah. the best way to enjoy a concert yeah and of course there is this of course practical question of of you know a lot of places will not allow like normal capacity of of audience and so on and, mm. and <laughs> for it's a pretty big production where we're we're, uh, we're traveling with so so and and this is what we earn earn our living from so mm. um so of course the 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 uh, that it wouldn't add up if it's if we can't do it properly it's better to wait until we can yeah. do it properly mm -hmm. no, that, that that's good to hear um sophie asked what song took the longest to finish oh uh, that would be uh well the the first song i ever wrote for for um Valdur and I is, is hagal on the first album and um so that was the first song I started recording and it was the last one I, I finished on the album um, seven, eight, seven years after. So, okay. so it, it's, it was there all, 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 all along and, and um, yeah, that, that's sort of the, the most clear, clear one. There, there mm -hmm. are other songs as well. That, there are even songs on this album that I, are ideas I started on like. 15 years ago that okay. uh, that I sort of took out from the drawer that that's the thing with uh, having been so focused on the trilogy 
um, that uh, the stuff that didn't fit into the trilogy was put in a drawer for for later. So that that was a very interesting process to to start um, start um, yeah revisiting these old ideas and thoughts. I mean, did that ever annoy you where you think I've got a really good idea for a song, but it doesn't quite fit with, like you say, for the trilogy and you're like, I've got to put it away, but I really don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. In a way. In a way. And, and of course, that that was a challenging thing to keep the focus on something for, yeah, 15 years. It took me to to finish the the trilogy. And, and there also there was a lot of ideas like for for the last album that was actually uh, put put on on paper on on a dictaphone or whatever like uh, ten years before. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, and that was of course I I, I did sometimes uh, regret starting <laughs> like <laughs> why did I have to do a trilogy um, because it, yeah. it it was it took took a lot of um, time and effort and mm-hmm. and and so on. Um, Perfect. Okay, last last one, and this is this is one I've been actually thinking about all day. To be honest, um, what does Ina Selvig listen to when he's at home on his own and he's pottering around, pottering around the kitchen making dinner? What what music or what band do you pop on, or what's your go to song? Is it is it things that are in your kind of in your genre, or do you just disappear and go somewhere else? Um, actually, I don't listen much to music, to be totally honest. Um, I, I think it's a result of working a lot with it. So okay. I, I kind of enjoy the silence. Um, mm-hmm. and, um, but, but then again, f- for periods, I, I, I do ha- get that need to, to hear. Um, and I guess half the time it, it goes back to like the classic stuff that I listen to in my youth and, and stuff like old metal classics or, or folk music or, and then other times it's, it's more like digging, digging into ethnic music and traditional, uh, yeah, traditional music and so on. Um, but yeah, for, for most of the time I don't actually listen to music, but then again, I have uh, kids who, who listen quite a lot to music. Okay. So, um, um and there it's yeah all kinds of music yeah anything from <laughs> from pop to to metal music and and they have quite cool taste so mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm i don't know i i'm not um i'm pretty limitless when it comes to to what i can enjoy listening to uh, mm. it, if it, if it speaks to me it speaks to me i don't give a shit what what genre it's labeled yeah. um um so it can be all sorts of things, really. Yeah, I always find that very odd when people are like, I don't like this type of music and are very much kind of tunnel vision. And like, no, anything that's that, like, I'm not listening to it. It's like, well, you might like it, just give it a try. Yeah, I, uh... you know, I'm a sucker for I'm a sucker for, for melody, you know, if it has a good, mm-hmm. good melody. But then again, it's music that is just industrialized. You know, it's it's just designed to have a catchy refrain that's going to annoy you for for a month mm-hmm. um and then it's gone i i that's pollution uh in in my ear mm-hmm. so i i never listen to like radio and stuff where where you have these list that just goes on and oh, okay. on yeah right uh, i i detest that i know i was i was going to say that i i, I feel like i hear the legions of true back metal fans out there in the background crying right now yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're not saying yeah i only listen to gorgoroth <laughs> no i actually don't listen much to gorgoroth but uh, i do listen to to uh, yeah I, I do like uh, enjoy listening to the stuff that really got me into the to the scene in in the first place you know mm-hmm. th- those are stairs um, mm-hmm. um so then yeah and um it's important to uh, to expose the youth um to that stuff as well, you know? <laughs> yeah <laughs> broaden the horizon mm-hmm. sow Absolutely. some seeds oh, i find that I find that quite disappointing because i i i thought maybe you had a a room at home with just a chair in 
a, a nice little armchair in the middle of the room and two speakers in front of it. And you'd sit there with a whiskey and uh, <laughs> put some metal on and uh, just enjoy it. That's no, what I was expecting. That's not me. That's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's not me. I think I know who it is. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know some. I have a few names as well. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Let, let, let's wrap this one up. I know. Thank you very much. I mean, not that you need us to plug any of your stuff, but is there anything you want to give a shout out to um, point anyone in, in a particular direction? Nah, uh, it's, <laughs> uh, it's, uh, no, it's, it's fun being here. So I'd rather, pl yeah, plug this show in that sense. It's a, uh, it's a good, um, good program and uh, it, it's um, cool, cool to, uh, to to see that uh, the podcast is growing and and uh, yeah you're getting a good following it's it's great to see uh, it's so I think um, yeah I think you're doing a great job um, of of sort of um, talking about um, yeah <laughs> of, uh, talking about um, potentially very complicated subjects and and having people who know who know things about it um yeah sh share share knowledge it's um it's a not uh, knowledge is is uh, well ignorance is a huge problem in this world and and knowledge is the medicine um so um so just keep on doing doing what you do and and have have people on who, who know <laughs> stuff <laughs> thanks <laughs> that's, that's the plan i mean i i i've learned an untold amount of stuff just from just from Matthias alone, let alone the the guests we have on. Um, it's, yeah, it's and ridiculous. I, I, yeah, and there is so much so, so much uh, um, strange information going on uh, mm -hmm. out there on, on these subjects. So it, it's it's really cool to to um, to have a um, something balancing that out that that we have alternatives. Basically, that's been uh, that's been lacking. Mm. Perfect. I'm gonna. Get somebody to clip that last minute, and then we're gonna use that somewhere. The INSL Vic seal of approval yeah. <laughs> endorsement. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Mateus. Where can people find you? Yeah, so you can always find me on Instagram, and you can find me once in a while uploading weird memes or something else in the Nordic Mythology Podcast group that we have created. You can also, of course, find me on Facebook, I guess. And uh, yeah, um, since it, this is still uh, relatively fresh, I also want to plug my new research book, Volcanoes in Old Norse Mythology, which is um, you can you can order it from Amsterdam University Press and Arc Humanities. It's like a collaborative thing. Um, you can also find it on Degroider. Um, but if you just like write my name and and volcanoes in old Norse mythology, it's gonna show up somewhere. So. <laughs> we'll find we'll find a link and post it in the show notes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. If you enjoy the show, please leave a positive review and a five star rating, preferably on iTunes. It really helps us kind of bump up the charts. Um, let me tell you, you can find us at Nordic Mythology Podcast on Facebook, Instagram. We have our Facebook group which is just Naughty Mythology Podcast, where, yeah, it, it gets a little bit funny in there sometimes. It's, it's Daniel's vanity project. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. No, it's 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 a, it's a good little group. Um, <laughs> you can find our website, just NaughtyMythologyPodcast.com, where you can get some merch, some T-shirts. Um, we're trying to push our YouTube channel. So, again, that's just Naughty Mythology Podcast on YouTube. You can subscribe uh, when we start just release new episodes and new little clips and i think that's it so Ina, thank you very much thank you very much for joining us um pleasure was so much oh last plug i forgot the patreon if you you know if you really do like this show patreon is the best way you can support us we've got a bunch of different tiers on there the best thing is you get access to man and vikings watch along show we do after the main show every week where we watch an episode of vikings and let people know well mateus lets you know what's true and what's not true i just laugh at 
people's ball caps and, and other, <laughs> other random stuff that's going on. But it's it's a good laugh. It's more lighthearted. It's I end up usually end up drunk by the end of it. Um, <laughs> so it's a you know it's it, it, that is a really good fun. Um, and like I said, the 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 little the money helps us buy new stuff, buy new equipment, employ people to help us out. So that's uh, always a big help. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you for joining us once again. Um, and obviously, you are welcome back anytime. Thank sure. you so much.